Yeah, so that's uh, one of the hazards at our beach right now is lots of jellyfish, some sea lice, which the sea lice we were dealing with is like little baby crabs that kind they of you, right? pinch you. Yeah, they don't bite you. Pinch, yeah. Uh, so not the most fun to be out in the water, but our rip current risk is lowering today and the water looks beautiful this morning. Fairly calm wind out of the west southwest. That slight westerly component for our wind, that is helping our dew point be a little bit lower this morning at 75. So it only feels like 78. This is a great morning to maybe take a walk across our bayfront on this Tuesday. Your sunrise right around the corner, 638 officially. 8.30 p.m. will be the sunset. We are going to see lots of sunshine. It is still a little dusty out there. Temperature is heating up, so I think we'll be a little bit slower to reach 100 for our heat index this afternoon. We may do it around 10 o'clock versus 8, 9 o'clock like we did it yesterday, but uh, your peak heat index likely nearing 112. It is still going to be very hot out there. Heat index forecast for Corpus Christi, 112, 111 Kingsville, 110 Robstown, 109 Sinton. We're going to keep the heat Heat index values right there just above 110 so we could see some heat advisories issued really through the weekend 4th of July looking to be one of the hottest days of the week so please make sure you're staying hydrated for your 4th of July plans if you are headed out to a fireworks show be ready for temperatures to be in the 80s likely the upper 80s with a feels like temperature 95 to 100 it is going to be breezy though so sitting on the bayfront you'll feel the sea breeze it will be gusty. That's something you'll have to keep in mind if you are living in one of those rural areas and planning your own fireworks. Wind gusts could be around 25 miles per hour. Of course, as we are also planning for the holiday, we also have Hurricane Barrel, which is going to create very hazardous or continuing to create very hazardous conditions across the Caribbean. This is Puerto Rico right here, so they're starting to see some of the outer bands from Barrel. It is going to continue to move west, slightly northwest, which which now has Jamaica and more of a direct impact from barrel. Uh, keep in mind this forecast cone is only forecasting anywhere the center, the eye of that storm could end up. So it could wind up on this northern path that takes it just over the kind of tip of the Caribbean or the Yucatan Peninsula, right? Or it could stay a little further south and hug the land. If this storm stays south, it's going to stay much weaker and it will continue more in a westerly path interacting with that landfall. If it takes this northern path, it has a better chance of, of getting a little bit more strength. So that's something we will be keeping a close close eye on in the days to come. We'll know exactly where on the Yucatan Peninsula it's hitting by Friday and then into Saturday and Sunday. That is when the storm will be in the Bay of Campeche or the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So it's weakening. You see this forecast trend of a weakening storm that has a lot to do with wind shear. It also has a little bit to do with Saharan dust. Now it does look like the plume of dust kind of races out ahead of barrel, allowing it to still stay hurricane strength. But in the Gulf of Mexico, I think we're going to see a little bit more dust interacting with it, which is why a lot of the forecast models do keep it at that tropical storm strength. So while it interacts with land and the dust, us, that would lower it to tropical storm. When it comes to waves, this is a good reminder about one of the big impacts that happen outside of the cone is going to be the chance of storm surge and just higher swells, rip current risk and dangerous surf conditions. So you see that across the northern end of this cone. And additionally, we could see some of those impacts in the coastal bend as early as Sunday. I'm not going quite that high for my wave forecast just yet because it would have to take a more northern path, which is more of what the GF or the American models are showing is that kind of northern turn. The European model, which historically is a more reliable hurricane model, staying on the southern side. But because of this high pressure split that we've been talking about a lot, that's what it's allowing for that northern turn. But still a lot of uncertainty even on this Tuesday on what it's going to do once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's still today is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. So Day five, six is when we're looking at the storm being in the Gulf of Mexico. Any impacts potentially to the Texas coastline would come Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. So still several days out, allowing for some of that uncertainty in the forecast. Barbie John Thomas.